The Jehovah's Witnesses look to a group of men known as the governing body as their leaders. They are the ones that translate the subliminal messages that come from Jesus and give it to the world's population. And one of those members is Stephen Lett. Stephen Lett is a real goofy goober. I've never seen someone that looks and talks as ridiculous as he does. And he has served up a beautiful smorgasbord of absolutely weird, wacky, and wild things that he said. At one time, he's called babies enemies of God. One time, he suggested that a woman in a abusive relationship should stay with her husband and that it would be bad if she went and found someone that truly respected her and truly loved her and they were happy together, he said that would be a bad thing for her to leave her abusive husband. This guy is completely unhinged when it comes to comical, weird, and harmful things that he could come up with to say. And so, me being someone that keeps a fairly tight pulse on what's going on within the Watchtower organization, I have heard all of his talks, and yet I was shocked by what he said in this one. I was actually surprised, and it takes a lot for me to be surprised when it comes to these guys because I just watch so many of their talks. Anyway, uh, this is during the 2023 Gilead graduation. It's the final talk there, and he serves up some weird concoction of elastic thinking that is more elastic than this guy's eyebrows. It is absolutely unhinged. But, uh, yeah, before we get into the video, don't forget to drop a like on this video and it helps to get out to more people on YouTube and subscribe to the channel if you do enjoy this content and uh, want to see more of it. With all of that being said, let the insanity begin. During his earthly ministry, Jesus expelled demons. He healed the sick. He fed multitudes. He even raised the dead. But was he known as the great demon expeller, the great healer, the great feeder of multitudes, or the great resurrector? No but he was known as the great teacher. Why? What are you getting at here? Well, you, you most certainly are a one, but I'm just not sure you're the, the one, right? Right? Of course I am. I'm, I'm the one, you moron. I am the son of God. I was sent down by my father to lead his flock to paradise. We are off to a fabulous start here. I want you to close your eyes and imagine that there is someone that can snap his fingers and cure blindness, that can spit in someone's eyes and rub the clay on them and whoa, I can see. I want you to close your eyes and picture someone that can wave his magic wand and someone raise, is raised from the dead. They were dead for days and you brought them back to life. And then that person gives a really good speech that you think, hey, that was pretty cool. Do you honestly think that that person would be known as the great teacher? Like, seriously, in what universe would that person not be universally known as that freaking guy that brought my grandma back from the dead? Oh my God, what a legend. In contrast to the quality of Jesus' teaching, Acts chapter 20 tells us about the Apostle Paul giving a long, long talk. And during that talk, remember, the young man Eutychus sank into a deep, deep sleep <laughs> and even fell out of the third story window of a building. Now, of course, Paul resurrected him, but uh, probably he felt responsible for putting, <laughs> putting him to sleep like that. No, you cannot joke about that. The captain of cringe, the satrap of sins, the, the king of kookiness has struck once again. 
I like how casually he says, well, and of course, I mean, he resurrected him. I know he literally bored someone to death with their with their bad talk, but it's okay because he resurrected him. Uh, and all of this is completely serious. People are laughing at it without giving it like a second thought because this man is serious. He is seriously saying that someone was giving a talk that was so boring that it put someone to sleep and the person fell out of a window and everyone <laughs> slapped my knee. Look at that idiot. He shouldn't have fallen asleep. And he's like, oh, don't worry, guys. Of course, he resurrected him. So, you know, no harm, no foul with that one. <laughs> well, I, I, I want to know what the resurrection was like. So you fall out of a window and, like, you break your, like, back and you're, like, disfigured and covered in blood. Is it like a little fairy, like, from uh, Zelda that goes around you and brings you back to life and you look like no damage was ever taken? I, I want to know what this actually looks like because he is 100% serious. And the people are laughing at how ridiculous it is because even though they believe him and they do think that it's serious, it's so ridiculous that it still makes them laugh because it's so just completely unhinged and absurd. And we all know that the governing body will do anything to get a laugh. They are always trying to fish and farm for laughing. Hey, I'm guilty of the exact same thing, so I can't blame them. But man, oh man, the casual nature, which he's like, well, and of course, he resurrected him back to life, is absolutely insane to me. But no offense to Paul. I'm sure he was doing the best he could. Well, let me get this straight. You think that killing those guys is funny? But obviously, his teaching was not on a par with that of the great teacher. And that makes me think of what a brother said to me in a teasing way. He said, Brother Lad, I always look forward to your talks. I know I'm going to wake up totally refreshed. <laughs> well, it's really true. None of us, like Paul, can begin to match the quality of teaching of the great teacher. So never would we want to come across half-hearted in our teaching. Just like enthusiastic teaching is contagious, half-hearted teaching is contagious too, isn't it? You could perhaps liken it to yawning. The one person yawns in a room, pretty soon everybody's yawning. And uh, that could be the way with half-hearted teaching. This is truly one of the most nonsensical things I've ever heard. Like, how, how has, has this group of bozos managed to climb their way to be in control of millions of people and billions of dollars? I, 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 whatever I'm doing in life, I'm doing it wrong because apparently you need to just switch the intelligence switch to the off position. And that's how you get people to follow you. Because holy moly, half-hearted teaching is not like a yawn where other people start yawning. It's the exact opposite of that. It's not contagious. Half-hearted teaching is a vaccine that, uh, that it immunizes you against bad ideas when th you are more likely to get tricked by someone that's enthusiastic and charismatic. You're more likely to get wrapped up in that by someone that you you feel like is passionate about it. And you are less likely to get caught up in some type of scam by someone that is bland and dull and boring. It, it, it's just not the way the world works. He's got this completely flipped on its head. It, it is not at anything like a yawn. Because that, that is true. One person yawns, a bunch of people start yawning. Like maybe the from an audience perspective, you have a boring t someone giving a talk and it's really boring. Boom, someone starts yawning, a bunch of people start yawning. Okay, that's true. But it's not like other people are going to be yawning and then think to themselves, I want to be just like him someday. When someone thinks, oh, I want to make a movie, they don't go to the worst movie ever made like Moonfall and then say, oh, I really, I really need to make that. Or some of the crap that Nicolas Cage, I actually kind of like Nicolas Cage, but um, 
you don't look at those and think, wow, what a magnum opus. I really want to be just like that. This is the most backwards logic I have ever heard. But uh, buckle up tight, because the next thing he's about to say is perhaps one of the funniest things I have ever heard from any governing body member ever. And I'm not even being funny when I say that. And some people might think that this is like AI generated. It's one of Wally's pranks or something. I promise you, this is 100% legitimate. This man actually said what you're about to see. But as a caution, we don't want to be theatrical in our speaking. That means we wouldn't want to use extreme gestures or dramatic um, expressions, overly theatrical, uh, even theatrical. Why? Because now you end up drawing attention to yourself, don't you? Rather than to what we're teaching. And that's emphasis in the wrong place, isn't it? As a caution, we don't want to be theatrical in our speaking. That means we wouldn't want to use extreme gestures or dramatic um, expressions, overly theatrical, uh, even theatrical. Why? If I was in the audience, I can guarantee that it would have taken a Herculean effort to hold back the laughter. And I'm assuming I wouldn't be unique. I wish we could turn the camera the other way and see the snickering, see the wide eyes, see people like, what did he say? Because this is the most clownish, cartoonish public speaker. He is ridiculous. Anytime I I show a, a Watchtower video to just someone that's never been a Jehovah's Witness or they're like, oh, what's a YouTube channel, blah, 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 and you, you play something by Stephen Lett, no one can take him seriously because he looks like a clown, an actual clown. It's not like he is the most theatrical. It's extremely theatrical. And for him to give the caution against it. It's, it's so bizarre. Like, what, what point in the multiverse have we found ourselves where Stephen Lett is giving counsel to people about how to not be too theatrical and drawing attention to themselves when giving a talk? I'm, I'm blown away. I, I don't understand how he can say that because... I've met him, I've talked to him one-on-one, -on -one, and he does not talk like this. In just like having dinner and a beer, when you're eating a hamburger, he is not the Stephen Lett we see on camera. So he is putting on a show whenever he gets up on stage. He's being theatrical. That, that it's, it's, so anyone that has met Stephen Lett, and I'm sure some people watching this have, they know that he just doesn't talk like this in everyday speech. And so he is in no position. They they get on the JW Broadcasting, even now, I think he's wearing makeup. He's getting all dolled up and then acting like a total goober. And yet telling people, hey, don't act like a goober on stage. It might distract from the message. This guy is the quintessential paradigm shift of Watchtower, I would say no one more than him embodies what the rebranding from Watchtower to JW.org was. Because everyone was tuned in to his broadcasting episodes. He was the one that really coined it. Welcome to JW Broadcasting. And every, everyone that's a Jehovah's Witness. As you guys know, I have witnesses that come and visit me about once every two or three weeks. And I made a comment because they told me to go to the website. And so the next time they came back, I talked about Stephen Lett. They even made fun of him. Active, believing Jehovah's Witnesses that are trying to convert me even laughed at Stephen Lett because he is a ridiculous human being. It, it is illogically stupid the way he talks. It's so over the top. 
that every ordinary witness will laugh at him. So I I imagine like when everyone was sitting there in the audience, if anyone was drinking water, it was immediately evacuated from their mouth because there is no chance that you'd be able to like actually drink a, a glass of water while hearing him say that. But hey, I'm here for it. I think that has to be one of the funniest things I've ever heard from Stephen Lett of all time. So we have a new real zinger to throw out there within the community. Don't be theatrical. And even his sentence structure, it's like he even knew. He's like theatrical and overly theatrical, so therefore theatrics are not theatrically, theocratically good. Uh, he got stumbled over his own words. It is absolutely hilarious to me. So uh, let's just pick up a couple more interesting little things or tidbits from this talk, and then we'll wrap it up, spank it on the bottom, and uh, I guess kiss your grand... No, no. Uh, I don't know what we'll do. We'll, uh, uh, we can all do something. I didn't really have any for that. I was going to say kiss your grandmother, but then, like... It would be weird because then people are like, wait, you want to kiss my grandmother? Well, no, like you are the one wrapping up and kissing your own grandmother. But my sentence made it sound like I, I have undiagnosed mental illness and I have a YouTube channel. See, what does that mean to be an active listener? Well, maybe uh, you, you would nod uh, periodically in agreement. Or maybe you would add some little comment. Well, it's very interesting. You do like facial yoga because I swear your face is just defining everything I know about physics. Uh, you, you might even ask for clarification. Uh, yeah, I would like a little bit of clarification, Stephen. Um, how does one generation become two generations? That's multiple generations over the span of like 2,000 years. Just curious. People like to clarify what they're saying. See, shows you're really interested and what's happening. Oh, I get it. People like to clarify what they're saying, but you don't because you're not a real person. I understand now. It's, it's normally much better than explaining the, a scripture to a student, having the student explain it to you. And don't be afraid of a little silence. See, if you ask a question and there's silence, some of us think, well, we have to quickly fill in the gap by saying something. But if they're thinking, let them think. Of course, you have to know your student. If they have no clue what the answer is, then don't let them just sit there and sizzle. <laughs> throw them a rope, throw them an auxiliary uh, question. I don't want to drone too long on the Gilead graduation just because these talks are, generally speaking, not that interesting. And I think we've covered most of the interesting bits. But... I just wanted to laugh at this part a little bit because we've all been there if you've ever been a Jehovah's Witness. It's almost shocking that no one would know the answer to a question because you ask them to read the paragraphs ahead of time. And then when you sit down and do the study, you read it again. And then the question is literally what's in the paragraph that you just read. And the reason that people will sit there and be like, as he says, if they have no clue what the answer is, the reason everyone's laughing is because anyone that's done a significant amount of the ministry uh, that Jehovah's Witnesses do is intimately familiar with this phenomenon. And it's the, the, the reason that they don't know the answer, though, is because everything is meant to dull your senses. All of their books, all of the questions, the entire experience of being a Jehovah's Witness is just being numb, being numb to everything, everywhere, all at once, just not caring, not engaging, not thinking. They just try and smooth out your brain to such a degree that you literally cannot read like four sentences have someone ask you a question, and all you need to do is repeat one of those four sentences, and you're like, what did you ask? Because the whole thing, by design, is to not engage anything that gets you excited or stimulating in an intellectual way. It's all designed to just kill 
all of that and make you a head nodder. So when people don't aren't able to answer a question during a Bible study, it's almost like a good thing because they're becoming a Jehovah's Witness. They don't need to answer the question. They just need to nod along. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up there. Uh, there's a little bit more of this talk, but it's Stephen Lett. It's the Gilead graduation. We know the spiel. There's a red blinking light that says my camera battery is about to die. So if you're still around, don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you do want to help support the channel, see it grow, see it thrive, see it sustain, you can consider becoming a channel member or joining the Patreon. And there's at least one upload per week. Uh, so you get some bonus content, which hopefully adds some value to those as well. With all of that being said... Stay safe, be kind, and don't forget to smile. And you better have a good-ass day.